Um, in my experience, that appears to be the case. Yeah, um, but but when I look at professional investors that I know in London, I think they're comparable to, and they're looking for similar things to what I know in in San Francisco. Which is well, they're looking for businesses that probably have some traction. I think the the lack of or the the increased risk tolerance in the US is probably at the earliest stages of investment and then you see valuations at the higher stages let's take an Uber or an Airbnb for example where people are perceiving that to be a higher risk tolerance I think that people investing at those multi-billion dollar valuations know a lot more about the companies than we know and so I actually don't agree with that but it is a perception what I what I meant was that when when you see jurisdictions focused on trying to promote an entrepreneurial um, ecosystem oftentimes they're bringing in programs from the Valley or San Francisco now that that actually post date the success of the Valley so those programs didn't create a magical entrepreneurial ecosystem in Silicon Valley they they grew out of that magical ecosystem and and so I don't think that you can assume that they're going to bring it to bear Well, it, because there is more capital overseas, and and when you say overseas, I think you mean Silicon Valley, and and um, and we, and for Silicon Valley, we of course include San Francisco. I think there's actually quite a bit more activity in San Francisco now than in in the Valley proper. But in that region, there is indisputably more capital available at the A and the B and the C stage, and so your odds of getting a, a sympathetic ear and some investment are higher. I, I don't think that that's anybody's business, frankly. I mean, as a policy organization, maybe I can understand why the government of the UK or the city of London might have an interest in that, but, but the entrepreneurs who founded a company have their own timeline and, and their own aspirations, and to, to put on them something that they must do it doesn't make sense to me um, so so I, I don't think that's really relevant if if they want to sell at a 200 million dollar valuation more power to them if they want to try to go for it a 20 billion dollar valuation that's fine but that's that's their decision I think one one point that was made which is is accurate is that there is more liquidity on the way up and and that means that that different funds different firms we've looked at them in some instances are more willing to allow an entrepreneur to make a small secondary offering or even some of the early investors and the stigma on that is is sort of gone and that's a good thing Yes, um, the, it, it is certainly the case that if an entrepreneur can, in their home market, achieve virtually global scale, which is true in China, India, the U.S., um, maybe you know, getting to be true in a few other major, large populated countries, that is an enormous advantage, which is, um, you, you can't really replicate that as they were describing the the international boundaries between countries in Europe have dropped it's easier to have a uh, to view it as a single market but you, you have language and culture that isn't going to go away well you, you describe that as a problem I, I view that as a wonderful advantage of the valley 
and and um, but uh, but I would say this that the global availability of information has resulted in many different countries embracing the entrepreneurial lifestyle where they wouldn't have in the past. The, the taboo of making mistakes, of failure, are going away in cultures where that was a big problem. And so those um, idols are really global idols now and I think, I think that has a pull in every market.